The Samsung Galaxy Watch is a device that I can't say I need, but having worn it daily for over three weeks, it's one of my favorite gadget purchases of the year. This is my review of the Samsung Galaxy Watch. Samsung's decision to rebrand their smartwatch lineup from Gear S Watch to Galaxy Watch makes sense. Speaking as a female, the gear branding just didn't resonate or appeal to me. Galaxy Watch lines up much better with their Galaxy branded smartphones. The watch runs Samsung's latest wearable operating system, Tizen 4.0. The operating system runs well, with the only gripe being a severe lack of third-party apps. I'll talk more about that later. Design-wise, it's an attractive, well-built smartwatch that can easily be mistaken as just a normal wristwatch. The rotating bezel is an absolute joy to use, allowing you to navigate through widgets and notifications while maintaining full visibility of the screen. The back and apps button have a satisfying click and are very responsive. The supplied band that comes with the watch has been super comfortable during everyday wear. Its IP68 water and dust rating means you won't have to worry when wearing it during your workouts. I'm also a big fan that it's compatible with generic watch straps, allowing you to easily swap them out and completely change the look in a pinch. The watch sports a 1.2 inch or 1.3 inch Super AMOLED display with a 360 by 360 pixel resolution. It's a beautiful display that we have pretty much come to expect from Samsung. It gets more than bright enough to be visible in outdoor conditions. There is a built-in speaker found on the left side. Although you can play music, sound quality isn't going to blow you away. The speaker does get plenty loud considering its size though. Answering phone calls, which is a more realistic use of the built-in speaker, has been a luxury that I've grown to really appreciate. Besides the downside of having everyone around you being able to hear your conversation, expect to get quite a few stares while speaking to your watch in public. It doesn't take away how awesome it is though. Calls are clear and the mic picks up my voice just fine. I have yet to receive a single complaint from anyone I've spoken to with on the watch. Here's a quick sound sample. Samsung claims up to 4 days battery life on the smaller 42mm and up to an impressive 7 days on the 46mm. My first charge cycle with the 42mm Bluetooth only model got me a disappointing day and a half. The second charge cycle was much better and the watch lasted me 2 days and 14 hours. Over the past 3 weeks, I've been averaging around 2-2.5 to two and a half days. My husband who has been using the larger 46mm watch with identical settings is getting around 3.5 to 4 days battery life. To get Samsung's claimed battery life, you'll likely have to scale down the settings quite a bit. When it comes time to charge up from a completely dead battery, both the 42mm and 46mm take a little over 2.5 hours to juice up to 100%. Overall, I'm satisfied with the battery performance. It'll probably be going on the charger nightly, but it's nice to know that if I forget to charge it, the watch can go a second day with no problem. Notifications will appear with a scroll to the left of your watch face. You will receive most notifications on the watch that you get on your phone. In the Galaxy Wearable app, you can customize which apps you want to receive notifications from. I noticed not all apps are listed. Google News, for example, is not listed and thus notifications do not appear on the watch, which is disappointing. The vibration motor on the highest setting is super strong. Trust me, there's no way you're missing any notifications. The Galaxy Watch works best when paired with a Samsung phone as their email, messages, and phone app all have native apps on the watch. This allows you to see your message history and initiate messages directly on the watch. If you're pairing it to a non-Samsung phone, you'll still receive notifications on the watch and for the most part be able to respond to them. However, you will not be able to see a history of your messages or initiate a message from the watch. This is where you start to notice Tizen's lack of app development. Although Samsung provides most of the apps you'd want on a smartwatch, those of you looking for a richer app experience may want to look elsewhere. I love listening to podcasts and audiobooks. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a watch app to do so. Widgets are stored to the right of the watch face. There are an assortment of Samsung app and health-related widgets that you can choose to add to your home screen. 
Any third party apps that have widgets will automatically show up once installed on the watch. I received a lot of questions from subscribers if Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp are available on the watch. While both do not have native apps on the watch, you will still receive notifications. With Facebook Messenger, you are only given the option to like the message and cannot reply back on the watch. WhatsApp messages, however, can be responded to directly on the watch. You have four options when replying to messages on the watch. Speech to text, handwriting, T9 keyboard, and customizable quick messages. Speech to text and quick messages are my personal favorites. The Galaxy Watch has really cut down on the number of times I check my phone throughout the day. This is especially true when I'm out and my phone is in my pocket or bag. It's super easy to dismiss the unimportant notifications right on your wrist and only check your phone for the important ones that require further action. The Galaxy Watch offers a range of fitness and health tracking capabilities. With its auto workout detection, the watch can automatically detect six activities. Walking, running, cycling, elliptical, rowing, and dynamic workout. All of which will sync to Samsung Health without you lifting a finger. It does a very good job of detecting and logging walks and will send you prompts on the watch to keep it up. I did run into a few occasions where it thought I was training on elliptical when I was just walking. The Get Active Reminders will prompt you to get up and perform 5 repetitions of customizable movements like torso twists or squats when it detects that you've been sitting around for too long. Although the Galaxy Watch is not the most accurate fitness tracker, it's more than capable of being your fitness companion. I did another video where I took a deeper dive into the watch's fitness and health tracking features, so I'll just summarize my findings here. The heart rate monitor is superb during everyday normal tasks, but struggles during more intense workouts. An accumulation of sweat and abrupt movements seem to throw off the watch's optical heart rate sensor. The pedometer appears to be slow to wake up. It takes a certain threshold of steps, 10 to 15, before it kicks in and starts counting. Once active though, it's flawless. Floor's climb tracking was an issue when I first got the watch, but after an update to the altimeter, the watch has been logging my floors consistently. The GPS is used to map runs. Location logs in very quickly, but can struggle in areas with lots of taller buildings. Sleep tracking offers a glimpse into the quality of your sleep and is built right into the watch. I found the watch to be very comfortable to wear, even to bed. Samsung Health is well designed and easy to use. It serves as a great hub to store all your fitness and health related information. I would like to see Samsung add the ability for users to add customized weight training programs and provide a widget to log completed sets, weights, and repetitions during workouts on the watch. I've been using a third party app called Gym Run to accomplish this. My experience with the Galaxy Watch from a fitness perspective has been far from perfect, but coming from wearing a G-Shock with zero fitness capabilities, I'm very impressed with the extra functionality it provides. Besides notifications and fitness tracking, which is par for most smartwatches, the Galaxy Watch has some other notable features that I've come across during my testing. Let's quickly go over them. The Galaxy Watch offers a massive number of watch faces. If you want watch faces, you will not be disappointed. Turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the watch is possible with either gear navigation or here we go. I have personally been using gear navigation as it works with Google Maps. You get turn-by-turn -turn instructions on the watch and vibrations notify you when it's time to make a left or right. It works, but honestly, I prefer to just use my phone screen for navigation. You have the ability to control media playing on your phone directly on the watch. Play, pause, skip, previous, or even adjusting the volume is all available on the watch. Both the Samsung Reminders and Voice Notes have dedicated apps on the watch and they sync flawlessly with your phone. You'll be alerted of reminders and notifications and are able to check them off once completed right on the watch. The Voice Note app is super handy for recording quick voice memos. It even transcribes your speech into text. The watch has a dedicated calendar widget which I use all the time. Scheduled events and notifications sync flawlessly with my phone and has been a great way to stay on top of appointments and upcoming events. 
Spotify is one of the third party apps that has a dedicated app for the watch and it's actually pretty good. You do need a Spotify premium account to use the watch app and it works without your phone as long as it's connected to Wi-Fi. You can also download Spotify music directly onto the watch in advance and listen offline. I really want to test out Samsung Pay, but unfortunately, my bank doesn't support it. Samsung actually removed MST technology from the Galaxy watches, so payment from the watches relies solely on NFC now. Finally, Samsung's virtual assistant, Bixby, is now integrated into the Galaxy watch. I'll put it this way. If you dislike Bixby on the phone, you're going to really not like Bixby after using it on the watch. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you probably don't need a smartwatch, but boy is it ever fun to use one. I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for more third-party developers to launch apps on the Tizen platform. Thankfully, Samsung has done a really good job of providing you with apps that you would realistically use on the watch. It's a durable, attractive, and well-built smartwatch with a battery that can go multiple days. The rotating bezel is by far the most fun I've had navigating on a watch, period. If you own a Samsung smartphone and are in the market for a smartwatch, it's hard not to recommend the Galaxy Watch. It's been my favorite gadget purchase of the year.